Dear colleagues, would you please take your seats so that we can continue our meeting. The sitting is open. As we agreed earlier this morning, we will now hear an address by the Prime Minister of Ukraine, Mr. Denis Shihal. Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, as you know, unfortunately, His Excellency President Zelensky had to counsel his intervention to this assembly this morning due to urgent unforeseen circumstances and asked the Prime Minister of Ukraine to speak on his behalf. I'm grateful that the Prime Minister was able and willing to uh, listen to the request of his president. So now it's my honor to welcome His Excellency Mr. Denis Sh uh, Shmihal, the Prime Minister of Ukraine. Mr. Prime Minister, you are with us on, 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 uh, online. We are most happy and very honored that you are uh, joining us virtually today. We can imagine your time constraints, so I will not take long. But I would like to express, on behalf of this assembly, my heartfelt solidarity with you, your country, and your citizens. This morning at the opening of the extraordinary session, we observed a minute of silence in memory of all those victims of this war of aggression which should never have started and which should now stop immediately. The moments you and your citizens are living through are devastating due to the brutal military aggression of our member state Russia against our member state Ukraine. For this blatant violation of the Statute of the Council of Europe, Russia has been suspended from its rights of representation in the Council of Europe. Our extraordinary session, which we started this morning and we will last until tomorrow evening, will further discuss the consequences of this aggression <coughs> by the Russian Federation against Ukraine and formulate a statutory opinion at the request of our Committee of Ministers. Mr. Prime Minister, I'm now honored to give you the floor. Thank you so much. Shanovni Pani President, Shanovna Pani Generalna Sekretarka Rady Evropy, Shanovni Shlene Assembly, Dziakuju za zaprošenje vystupiti pred Assembleyu i donesti do kožnoho z vas golos ukrajinskoho narodu, golos blisko ста націй і ста національностей з різних куточків України, східних та західних, північних і південних областей України, вільних і тимчасово, на жаль, окупованих. Голос цивільного населення, дітей, жінок, які зараз змушені переховуватись у бомбосховищах. І, звісно ж, голос наших військових, які мужньо вже 18 діб дають гідну відсіч російським окупантам. Голос, який протягом останніх трьох років не всі і не завжди чули або... Not everyone has heard or didn't want to hear as they wanted to do business as usual with the aggressor. In spite of numerous violations by them of the international law and of the human values. Getting 
when Russia was brought back, the Russian delegation to the Parliamentary Assembly back in 2019, where you are gathering now, once again showed a poor understanding by the world of the real threat that Putin's regime is. Then Europe chose the road of pacifying the aggressor rather than defending the, demo the values, democracy, the rule of law and human rights. For the past 18 days, the world finally opened up the eyes. We never closed our eyes, not for a second. 18 days of this open war, thousands of death, the loss of almost 90 children, thousands of Ukrainians without any food, any water, any heat, destruction of hundreds of schools, hospitals that have been shelled, nuclear power plants on the brink of a disaster. And that's at the time when Russia, according to the Convention on Human Rights and Fundamental Freedoms, vowed that it would promote the right to life and defend any person from unlawful violence. Dear members of the Assembly, the right to life is one of the key fundamental rights. And today, at the center of Europe, this right is being violated every minute and every second. For the leaders of the Russian Federation, there are no values at all. The Russian armed forces behave like terrorists. They bombard schools, kindergartens, hospitals. They kill children. They take them hostages. They kidnap representatives of the local authorities, they torture civilians, and all of that started 18 days ago. Violation of those fundamental rights and freedoms by Russia since the very beginning of the Russian aggression against Ukraine was discussed by the Assembly dozens of times. In the territories under Russian control, for eight years, systemic reprisals have continued against anyone who does not agree with the aggressors. And today the Russian government is mobilizing the residents of Crimea to the armed forces of Russia, forcing people who are to be protected by the Fourth Geneva Convention to serve in the armed forces of the enemy state. A Russian military pilot is bombing, dropping bombs on his own mother in Poltava region. It's hard to believe that. But even such crazy things become a normal life for the aggressors. Every day we receive more and more news about violation of the freedom of speech, the right to live, to labor, to have medical services and education. All those actions have to be properly assessed by the international community. Dear members of the Assembly, today Russia is saying that there is no war, that nobody has declared this war, they're just conducting it. At this time, they're calling it a special military operation. We have confirmed information that more than 12,000 Russian soldiers have been killed, 389 tanks, 1,249 APCs, 77 fighter jets, 90 helicopters. I'm convinced that among you there are former military people. Just ask them whether in history there have ever been such special military operations that would have such consequences for a country that initiates this kind of military operation. Those flows of lie and hatred that are disseminated by the Russian media, the Russian propaganda, have to be stopped. Russian fakes have to be stopped, that have to try, that are trying to establish those lies in the Russian society. I can tell you that Russia and President Putin have started a full-scale war in the center of Europe that can become a third world war. Starting 2014, Ukraine has asked not to bring the Russian delegation to the Parliamentary Assembly, not to bring them back. Today, the Russian delegation has stopped its work with the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe, and I'm sure that this just reflects Putin's wish to avoid punishment and to restrict, to put an end to thousands of complaints and applications by Ukrainian citizens for all the crimes that he 
and his people have committed against Ukraine for the past eight years. But we all know that punishment for genocide and terrorism cannot be avoided. And we have to be tough in our response. We demand that a decision is approved to immediately oust Russia from the Council of Europe. The ones who definitely support this non-provoked and unjustified aggression cannot stay in the single European family where human life is the highest value. Dear ladies and gentlemen, Ukraine is on fire. Hundreds of houses have been built. We're short of water, of light, of heat for millions of our people. We need to join our efforts, not only to protect, to defend Ukraine, but to defend all of Europe today. We need to stop the aggression until a nuclear disaster comes in, until all of Europe is on fire. So, of course, we are asking, we are demanding to close the skies over Ukraine, to close the sky for the sake of the millions of people in Ukraine, for the sake of European and world security. And at the end, I would like to thank you from the bottom of my heart to all the neighboring countries, Poland, Slovakia, Hungary, Romania, Moldova, Lithuania, and other countries of Europe for their support, support that they have given to our women and children, to all those who, on a temporary basis, have to look for shelter in your countries and those who have found shelter, who have found warmth, hospitality, attention, all these values that our joint, that our common European family is rich with. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your solidarity, for your position, the solidarity that you are showing us. Glory to Ukraine, glory to free and democratic Europe. Thank you uh, very much, Mr. Prime Minister. This assembly is not used to loud applause. Therefore, I think you can take this unanimous applause of this assembly as a sign of our support for the government of Ukraine, its authorities, and especially the citizens of uh, your now beleaguered country. I thank you from the bottom of my heart that you took the time to brief you under very difficult circumstances, as we are all aware, about what is happening in Ukraine and the need that international solidarity, which is now seen and shown, has to remain and has to be strengthened. In this uh, meeting of the Parliamentary Assembly, we will now examine the question posed to us by the Committee of Ministers whether Article 8 of our statute, written down already in 49, has to be further uh, applied, which could lead to the exclusion of a member state of the Council of Europe for the first time ever in modern history. As you pointed out quite clearly, there is not only that, we, that the Russian army has crossed the borders of Ukraine in an illegal and an aggressive way, but it also has crossed the red lines of this organization. And that will not be without consequences. The precise measure, size of these consequences, as said, will be debated now and in the, in the, in, in the, in the coming hours and tomorrow. May I again thank you May I wish you strength and 
wisdom and courage, uh, you have to be aware that not only the Council of Europe, but I think the vast majority of the international community stands with you and stands up against aggression by the biggest state on earth who has shown to understand so little about international law and civilization. Thank you very much, Mr. Prime Minister. Stay safe and sound and we wish you, your government and your people well. Thank you very much. The next item on the agenda is the communication from the Committee of Ministers to the Assembly, presented by Mr. Benedetto Della Vedova, Under Secretary of State of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation of Italy. This will be followed by questions to Mr. Della Vedova. Now, dear colleagues, it's my pleasure to welcome Mr. Benedetto Della Vedova, Under Secretary of State, speaking on behalf of the Presidency of the Committee of Ministers of the Council of Europe. Mr. Della Vedova, we are very pleased to have you with us today in this exchange of views. The Italian Presidency of the Committee of Ministers has the lead at a very difficult time for Europe and humanity. After the pandemic crisis in Europe, the Italian presidency is now facing 